Welcome past, present, and hopefully future MechWarrior 3 players. This video is going to be a brief, well, not so brief, depending on if you want to click ahead or not, video of how to get MechWarrior 3 running on your machine, your modern Windows 10, 8, or 7 machine, that is, with DG Voodoo, so that way you can have all the enhanced visuals, not exactly enhanced visuals, up resolution, anti-aliasing, stuff like that. I will give you a brief explanation of DG Voodoo and what it does and how it works. If you're in, an impatient person, I will leave a timestamp below, so that way there you can go ahead and click ahead for the actual install process. What we have to understand is that DG Voodoo is an API wrapper. So what that means is you have your game, which is old, as we know. That game uses an API, which is going to be DirectX 6. And that sends the signal to the wrapper, which is DG Voodoo, that then sends pretty much what is a DirectX 11 signal to your machine saying, we are now a DirectX 11 capable game. And then that outputs to what you see on the screen. That's a pretty basic explanation of what DG Voodoo does. The problem with this is that it can cause issues in the background if you're trying to play with a lot of settings or do things that it wasn't meant to do. Another problem that I've encountered is if you're trying to run con uh, your graphics card control panel set Settings. at the same time as DG Voodoo, that can potentially cause issues. That in itself is going to be a your mileage may vary situation. Now that we've got that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and, and talk about the install process. So what you're going to want to do is get yourself a copy of MechWarrior 3. You can eBay that, you can Amazon that, uh, myabandonware.com also has a ripped copy, legality issues aside, or you can simply use your imagination on how to acquire a copy. So now that we have a copy of MechWarrior 3, if you have the ISO version, the my abandonware, but an actual disk copy of the game, you're going to want to install that. It installs some registry stuff in the background and also uh, a little DLL file, I believe. I'm not 100% certain on this. It should be like uh, MSBC 50 or MSBC P50.dll or something like that. Either way. Uh, just go ahead and install that so that way you can get that out of the way. Uh, do take note that if you if you install the game with a disc copy, you will have to leave the disc in your drive. Or if you're using a ISO copy of the game, you will have to leave that mounted. Since most people that are coming here are probably not going to pay for the game, again, leg legality issues aside, you're probably going to go to myabandonware.com and download the RIP copy. So we're going to go ahead and use that as a demonstrational video here. Once you download it, Go ahead and copy your, or extract the contents and copy the MechWarrior3-rip folder directly to your C drive. The reason for this is to get past potentially bad problems that may confuse you in terms of administrative privileges. Modern versions of Windows love their administrative privileges and if you copy it to your desktop or your downloads folder or files x86, that's a big one. You, you might run into problems with it. And the default directory is C micropro, Micropro's uh, MechWarrior 3 anyway. So yeah, just slap that bad boy in your C drive and it should look something like this. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is double click this reg setup file. It's pretty much a Razer 1911 file. So basically what that is is a no CD crack. So that right there, if you have the rip copy, it won't give you that annoying no uh, no CD found error. This is a DRM protected game. It's not as bad as <laughs> Ubisoft, but it is still there for a 1999 game. What you want to do first is go ahead and la or launch your game. Compatibility, it should launch out of the box. The two problems that you might come into, uh, might have an issue with is Windows might say that, or the game might say that it requires direct draw. If you're on Windows 10, it should automatically pop up with a box showing you, hey, you can install this here. Just go ahead and click, click, and click yes. Yeah, if you're on Windows 7, this should not be an issue. I do believe that it the same issue might occur on Windows 8, but don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. I haven't used Windows 8 in a long time. So if it doesn't give you that box, what you're going to want to do is click your start menu and type in Windows features. I just type in Windows because I've, I've done it like three different times since I'm a video noob and this is like the fifth time I tried this. Go ahead and turn that on or launch it rather. And you're going to want to click the box for legacy components. So as you can see, direct play is the only thing in there. Um, once that's installed, you may or may not have to reboot because of how bad old games are. Just go ahead and do it anyways. So we're going to get that out of the way. Again, try to launch the game. If it doesn't launch the other issue that you're going to come into contact with is 
msvcp50.dll has not been found. I will post a link in the description below showing you a Reddit thread. All you have to do is click that, scroll all the way down, you'll see a Dropbox link for this DLL. Download it from there and copy it to your root directory here with the executable. That, this reg setup file right here, might come up as a false negative in your antivirus, so just a heads up on that. After that, go ahead and launch it. It should finally launch. Again, you don't need compatibility settings. Um, I'm running the 1803 feature set of Windows 10. It launched perfectly fine without it. Go ahead and set up your character and then launch either campaign, training, or instant action. So you need to do this to get your config and your pilots. And then after that, you can finally click and quit out. You don't have to play or anything because it's probably going to go all bananas on you for being over 60 FPS. After that, you're going to want to go to the DG Voodoo site. I'll have a link to that in the description below. Download the file, extract it. And then what you're going to want to do is copy this DG Voodoo file and then paste it into your root directory here. The next thing you want to do is go to the MS file copy all three of these DLL files and also paste that into your default directory. Finally, what you're gonna to wanna to do is right click on the DG Voodoo file, go to properties, go to compatibility, and run this program as administrator. And then click apply and hit okay. And then finally, you can launch it. You're probably sitting there thinking, well, that's a lot of settings. Indeed it is. So if you're only running MechWarrior 3 with DG Voodoo, then you don't have to worry about the running instant. If you are going to use DG Voodoo for other games that uh, may or may not work, I suggest hitting the add button and pointing to your root directory of MechWarrior 3. So what this does is it, whenever you go to set these settings and hit apply, it'll copy the config file directly to your MechWarrior 3 directory. The plus side to this is if you're running multiple games, all of your settings will run off of one configuration file in your apps folder and not all games will run with the exact same settings. Actually, MechWarrior 3 and MechWarrior 3 Pirates Moon requires me to have different settings. Your mileage may vary, of course, but for me, that's always been the case and I run four or five different games this way, so I like to just have the configuration file inside the root directory. Your output API you wanna leave on best available. Your adapters to use, you're going to wanna to point this to whatever graphics card handles all the powerful applications. So in my case, Tynex Pascal. So if you have a laptop with a dedicated graphics card or an IGP, you want to go ahead and click that on your dedicated graphics card. This will require a little bit more power than running vanilla MechWarrior 3. Your full screen output, if you only have one monitor, you can ignore this. Um, most of the time, default will go directly to your main display. If you're running a funky monitor setup, choose the display that you want the game to output to. That's pretty straightforward. The rest of these settings, you can pretty much ignore. You can play with them if you want to, like color, brightness, contrast, etc. I just leave it all default. The only thing else you have to worry about here that's not default is the scaling mode. So if you leave it on unspecified, what's gonna happen here is the default resolution in MechWarrior 3 is four by three. So think of an old CRT monitor or an old CRT tube TV from back in the day. Modern monitors, which most people will probably be playing this on is 16 by nine. So what I like to do since I run a 16 by nine resolution is stretched but keep aspect ratio. So basically all this does is it just takes the image that it's rendering and stretches it so that there you have full screen. Your mileage may vary on this, so this is going to be one thing that you're going to want to play with just to get whatever you like. So finally we're going to come to the DirectX tab. You can ignore the Glide tab. You can leave the video card on DG Voodoo Virtual 3D Accelerator card. That's perfectly fine. I run a 4K resolution, so I take the VRAM and put it at 1024. If you're running like 1080p, you can leave it on the default. That's not a big deal. Texture filtering. So I like to uh, put this on Force Anisotropic 16X. This is really not a taxing setting. So pretty much everybody should be able to force this. It really makes the game a whole lot clearer and it looks a whole lot better. Your resolution, so you're gonna have a long list of resolutions. The default is unforced. What that means is it's going to output whatever the end game resolution is. That's gonna be 640 by 480, 800 by 600, or 1024 by 768. If you're running this on a modern computer, you're gonna to wanna to put it on whatever your native resolution is. Whether it be 720p, 1920 by 1080, um, 2560 by 1440, or if you're like me, running at 4K. 
the game will run at 4K and it looks pretty good. So down here, what I do is I unclick disable alt enter to toggle screen state. This by default is clicked. Pretty much what this does is on default with it disabled, it means that you can't hit alt enter to make it go into window mode. I disable this just because it works for me. Um, I don't actually get out of the game by using alt enter or going to window mode. I, I've had some issues in the past where launching the game, trying to get into the game, if I didn't have this unchecked, it would not work right. Um, I don't know why, don't ask me why. Again, your mileage may vary. Anti-aliasing, so you can force up to 8X anti-aliasing in the game. This is taxing. So if you don't have a decent graphics card, I would not recommend trying to run anti-aliasing. Um, run it on off first, just to get the game running and then experiment with it later. The next thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to put on bilinear blitz stretch. What this does is it makes it so that with there your HUD isn't fuzzy as crap. And trust me, if you don't have this on, it is very fuzzy. You definitely wanna have that on. Apply fong shading when possible. I don't know what this does. I haven't really noticed a difference, but I turn it on anyways, just because it works. So for now, I would leave the DG Voodoo watermark on. When you're in the game, if DG Voodoo is working, that watermark will be in the bottom right hand of your screen. This is essential to make sure that it's actually working and I just always leave it on because I don't want to get into a game with a bunch of guys and not be running 4k especially if I'm recording to put on YouTube I definitely want to put that crispy 4k footage on YouTube if you're confident in it running all the time you can turn it off that's up to you the last and most important bit is force v-sync so what this does is it forces it to your vertical refresh of uh, your vertical synchronization refresh of your monitor so here's the big dealio this game does not like running over 60 fps all the physics issues that you have with ap's or uh, mobile fuel bases and other vehicles like bouncing to the moon and you try to jump jet and you're you know you just fall flat on your face and all kinds of stuff like that is all based on the fact that you're running it over 60 fps if you have a 60 hertz monitor force v-sync and dg voodoo this will lock your frame rate to 60 fps and you don't really have much to worry about there this should cause or this should solve all the issues for most people having with this game but since you have all these extra options you might as well play with them right the caveat here is most people will have over 60 hertz well some people will have over 60 hertz so if you have 75 70 85 100 144 120 hertz or 165 hertz or 240 hertz monitor you're gonna have to figure out a way of capping your frame rate elsewhere you can either do this by changing your refresh rate inside your control panel of your video card, or you can do this by changing the refresh rate to your monitor through the adapter settings in device manager. And the final option for that is downloading a program like RevaTuner and capping the frame rate that way. I will tell you right now, I have not had any luck doing any of the other options. Finally, your mileage may vary. You are going to spend time if this doesn't work right off the bat, you're gonna spend time messing with these settings. That's just something to think about. If you really wanna play this game, you're gonna sit there for a little bit. If you're lucky, you won't. Um, that's pretty much all I can say on that. And I've never played with the fast video memory access in case you're wondering. So again, mileage may vary. Go ahead and experiment. If you like to experiment, if you break it, you're gonna have to start all over. All the links will be down in the description. Um, our official Discord will be actually play together they play every single sunday almost it's usually a two to four man team if we get more people to set this up you can play with us you will have to have game ranger i'm sure you can google how to find that i will leave a discord link down in the description two last things to mention your music your in-game music will not work unless you have the actual physical cd into a drive um i have not found a way around this so if you really want the single soundtrack just bring up youtube in the background play it play the campaign the last and final thing that you need to make sure is whenever you actually get into the game which i'll show here go to the settings and make sure that your graphics adapter shows dg voodoo something or other adapter uh, it'll uh, it'll probably say what's under video card here um I'll, I'll leave a blip on there just to show it but yeah you need to you need to make sure that that's set otherwise it won't be sending the signal it'll it'll try to run it like a regular game and not through this api wrapper so i think that pretty much covers it again links will be down in the description and i hope to see you on the battlefield